So, yeah, it's, uh, it's been quite an evolution over the last three months. Uh, we've uh, been involved from the beginning through all the processes of assessing our spacecraft, uh, Calypso, and um, it was uh, trying at times. It was, uh, there were some tough times all the way through. You certainly, as uh, the commander and the PLT of your spacecraft, you don't want to see it go off without you, but that's where we wound up. And through all the process, uh, most of the news we heard as we would hear things uh, over the news waves and, and uh, the different means that we have to get information up here, that 80% uh, of the time you'd hear Sonny and Butch, Butch and Sonny, Sonny and Butch, Butch and Sonny. And I just want everybody to know how much we appreciate that. I sent down my request for a ballot today, as a matter of fact, uh, and they should get it to us in a couple of weeks. And absolutely, yes, uh, it's a very important uh, role that we all play as citizens is to uh, be included in those elections, and NASA makes it very easy for us to do that. So we're excited about that opportunity. And Marsha, same here. You know, it's a very important duty that we have as citizens and uh, looking forward to being able to vote from space, which is pretty cool. Um, you asked what we miss, right? Of course, you know, the things that we always miss, our families. I miss my two dogs. I miss my friends. But you know what? Like Butch said, there are so many people uh, on Earth that are sending us messages, and it, it makes you feel just right at home with everybody when we're able to have those conversations with our friends and family at home. Let down? Absolutely not. Not Never entered my mind. Uh, I don't think Sonny's either uh, until you mentioned it. it. It's a fair question. I, I get it. Obviously, when you have uh, an issues like we've had, there's some changes that need to be made. Uh, Boeing's on board with that. We're all on board with that. And I can tell you, um, when you push the edge of the envelope again and you do things with spacecraft that have never been done before, just like Starliner, you're going to find some things. And in this case, we found some things that we just could not get comfortable with uh, putting us back in the Starliner when we had other options. There's many cases in the past where there have not been other options. We were very fortunate that we have the space station um, and that we had the option to stay and we had the option to come back a different way if that's what the data showed. I think the data could have gotten there. We could have gotten to the point, I believe, where we could have returned on Starliner, but we just simply ran out of time. Other, other thoughts about seeing it leave? You know, like, we're, like you mentioned, we're both you know, Navy, we've both been on deployments. We're not surprised when deployments get changed. I mean, our families extended. Our, our families are used to that as well. So uh, that is, that's not a humongous surprise. I think, like Butch said, this is, this is test. I think before we even flew, we had an interview with a, a lot of you and, and mentioned the same thing, that, you know, a test flight means that we're probably going to find some stuff. We've done as much as we can uh, to look at the envelope that we're going to operate in. But this is the first time that we've had humans in space in Starliner, and we did find stuff, and um, you know we made the right decisions, and we're here, and that's that's how things go in this business. Like Butch said, it's it's risky, and that's how it goes in the business. It was wonderful that it made it back, and the fact that we weren't on it didn't even come into mind at all. It was never like, oh, we shouldn't. No, not at all. Um, the decision was made, like I said, we flipped that bit, we go forward with the plan of the day, and uh, we hope the best for all aspects of all uh, space flight endeavors, regardless of where they are, regardless of what's taking place. So we go with it. Uh, eight, eight days, it was more than eight days, but eight days is a number that keeps getting said. It was going to be longer than that. But to eight days to eight months or nine months or ten months, whatever it is, we're going to do the very best job we can do every single day because that's what the folks that do this type of job have to do. You have to have that mindset because it is not an easy business, like I said. You know, you sort of turn to and, you know, just take on the next activity for, of the day. And, you know, we just, that's what we do. We're professionals. I think I have to say, though, in the back of my mind, you know, there's, there's folks on the ground who had some plans, right? Like, uh, you know, like my family and um, so to spend some time with my mom and, I think I was fretting more about that, like the things that we had sort of all talked about and planned for this fall and this winter. Uh, trying times, and this is, you know, my daughter's, I'm, I'm going to miss a, most of her senior year in high school, yeah. uh, my youngest daughter, um, and uh, my oldest daughter's a sophomore at uh, East Texas Baptist University, and uh, I wasn't be able to w be with her in the, this, during the summer, but um, like, I, like I said earlier, we've tried to teach them the principles that are important 
and let them understand that uh, trials, however you judge what a trial might be, makes you stronger. And in that respect, um, I'm grateful. I'm grateful that, uh, you know, it's played out the way it has. We're here, we're safe, we're in a place that uh, we're both familiar with and doing things that we actually enjoy doing. And, uh, but for them, it's a, it's a, it is different and they're gonna learn from this and they're gonna grow from this and uh, like they never could have in any other situation. And for that, I am grateful. On. Yeah, and I think, I think you hit the nail on the head. My husband has said that, my mom has said it before too. This is my happy place. I love being up here in space. It's just fun. You know, every day you, you do something that's work quote unquote, you can do it upside down, you can do it sideways. <laughs> so it adds a little different perspective. And you know, about staying up here longer, one of the things I was sort of regretting about a short duration flight is I wasn't gonna be able to share it with a lot of people. One of the things I like to do up here is sort of write like a little recap of the week and send it down to people so they can see what fun we're having and what you know what kind of work we're doing up here because it is so much different than being on earth and it i think it opens up that door of making you think a little bit differently just perspective so much for taking the time uh my question is for sunny um and it's a little philosophical so apologies for that but what do you feel in your body your mind and your soul when you run in space and how does it compare to running on earth Um, so, interesting question, you know, I was mentioning a lot of the physical activity that we do up here, it's, it's a little harder, a little different, uh, but fun at the same time. Um, when I'm on Earth and I'm running... Associate Administrator Jim Free, Associate Administrator for Space Operations Ken Bowersox. NASA has decided that Butch and Sonny will return with Crew 9 next February. Uh, and that Starliner uh, will return uncrewed, and the specifics in the schedule will be discussed momentarily. Space flight is risky, even at its safet safest, and even at its most routine. And a test flight by nature is neither safe nor routine. And so the decision to keep Butch and Sonny aboard the International Space Station and bring the Boeing Starliner home uncrewed is a result of a commitment to safety. Our core value is safety and it is our North Star. I have just talked to the new Boeing CEO, Kelly Ortberg. Uh, I have expressed this to, the, to him. I told him uh, how well Boeing uh, worked with our team to come to this decision. And uh, he expressed to me uh, an intention that uh, they will continue to work the problems once Starliner is back safely. I'll hand it over to Norman. Thank you, Dana. I talked with Butch and Sonny uh, both yesterday and today. They support the agency's decision fully, and they're ready to continue this mission on board ISS as members of the Expedition 71 crew. We'll move into the question and answer portion now. Um, we'll open it up again to folks in the room and folks on the phone. So how now do you begin to rebuild that relationship of trust with Boeing. You want to add? Yeah, I, I wouldn't necessarily call it trust. I would call it a technical disagreement where we get uh, a group of engineers together and they disagree on the risk level of what could potentially happen to the thrusters. Um, Boeing did a great job building a model. Now, we, the question is, is that model good enough to predict performance for a crew? Uh, trust is a two-way street and it's built uh, upon a relationship. And I think uh, as indicated just an hour ago by the new CEO of Boeing, that they intend to move forward and fly Starliner in the future, which is very important to NASA, that we have two uh, human rated vehicles. 
I think uh, you should understand the, the trust is two ways. Lots of cheering here in the room. Big hugs. Sunny William coming through in her blue flight suit. Oh. And followed shortly behind by Commander of Starliner, Butch Wilmore. Now back on the space station, the third visit for both astronauts and the first crewed flight test of the Starliner spacecraft. Um, I, I feel confident that if we had to, if there was a problem with the International Space Station, we can get in our spacecraft and we can undock talk to our team and figure out the best way to come home. Um, yeah, we've, like I said, we've practiced a lot, so I have a feeling, I have a, a real good feeling in my heart that uh, this spacecraft will, br will bring us home, no problem.